Can you imagine what it would be like? But that's what it was like for the people who experienced his presence when he walked the streets in the biblical days that we read of. But you know, there's a day coming when he shall reign and rule on this earth, when he sets up his kingdom. And it speaks of how in the new Jerusalem there will be those that go in and out of the city and so forth. And he will be the light of that place. There will be, be no need for artificial lighting because the Lamb is the light thereof, referring to him. And how that we will have access into his presence. Oh, and just think, very possibly, each one of us at some point will be touched by those hands, the hands of the Lord. I want us to uh, look at this in Mark, ladies, that I've asked you to turn to. Mark 6, verse 2. In the Amplified, it says, And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who listened to him were utterly astonished, saying, Where did this man acquire all this? What is the wisdom, the broad and full intelligence, which has been given to him? What mighty works and exhibitions of power are wrought by his hands. You see, the hands, even the Cruden Concordance bring out that our, the hands and the fingers symbolize the power, the workings, the action, the operation of Almighty God displayed through Jesus Christ, a visible sample of the Godhead bodily. So those hands that the bride was appreciating and telling her neighborhood friends and neighbors so that they could help her find him. She was describing what his hands would look like if they should come up on him. This is how they would know who he was, why his hands, they're like rods of gold. He's got fingernails like topaz and like burl. My, my, the hands of God. I appreciate the hand of God placed upon my life as a little child and how he plucked me up and plucked me out of a of, of, of family si uh, situation and all that was not godly. And he brought me to a knowledge of him by his mercy and his grace and his love and all oh, what he has spared me from through these years as I've walked with him by having captured my life as a little one. Now to my, as the Bible says, my hoary head, my gray hairs, my senior years, to have had the hand of God upon my life. And you know, for you, it's no different. I'm no better. I'm no more privileged. I don't have anything better that would cause it to be that I'm qualified than you. The hand of God is either placed on you today, you that are a child of God, or you that are listening and you don't know our Lord but he would like to place his almighty hand on your life if you would come under that, that ownership and submit to his will in your life. It will be wonderful what you will experience in the days forward of what the hand of God upon your life would do. You would have to begin to exclaim, his hands are beautiful. They are made of gold. Let's, let's look about, uh, at the text a little bit closer where it speaks about his hands are like, they're like rods of gold, all right? As we looked at that, Song Solomon 5, 14, that being our basic text, she, she said his hands are like rods of gold set with nails of burl or topaz. Well, these rods of, of gold, she's talking about his fingers, his fingers that operate his works and his mighty deeds. They look to her like rods of gold, like slender, straight bars of gold. I think of how, ladies, we won't turn there, but I'm going to refer to some incidents in the scripture that we won't have time to turn to. But I think of how in Exodus 8, in verses 17 through 19, the scripture says that, during the time when God was bringing judgments upon Egypt because Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel out of their slavery and out of their bondage and go on their way to their promised land. And as the various plagues was hitting Egypt, 
by the might and the power of God to cause old Pharaoh to say, good enough, get riddance, go, get out of here. One of the pestilence that came, one of the consequences that came of God's judgment was, was that of gnats and mosquitoes. And the scripture says that Aaron, who was Moses' brother, and he was the priest, it says he, with the rod that was in his hand, remember today we're talking about hands, okay? With the rod that was in his hand, he struck the dust. Now before that, all of the other of the ten plagues, all of all those Pharaoh's magicians through the power of Satan, they could duplicate it. They could counterfeit everything that Moses and Aaron did, such as when, when he threw down his rod, it became a serpent. Well, they threw down their rods and theirs became serpents and so forth. But when Aaron stretched forth his hand with his rod and he struck the dust, these gnats and these mosquitoes rose up out of the dust and they began to bite all the people and bite the creatures and the beasts, the animals. They were driven crazy with being bit with gnats and mosquitoes. Well, Pharaoh's magicians thought, I can do that too. So they tried the same thing and nothing happened. Nothing happened. They could not counterfeit this particular judgment of the Lord as they had the others. So what did they say to themselves and said one to another and to those that are around? They said, the magician said, because they couldn't duplicate that, they said, this is the finger of God. Now, they weren't believers. They were believers. They were like heathen. They said, this has to be the finger of God that this could take place. They could not duplicate it. Yes, there will be signs and wonders, the Lord says, in the earth. And especially in the latter days, I believe there's more signs and wonders as a witness to draw mankind to focus upon God. And we will see operations of the things of God and by his hands, by his fingers, and we'll have to exclaim, this is the finger of God. This is not a man thing. This is a God thing. We think about the two, two tablets of stone when the Lord called Moses upon the mountain and he gave him the laws to govern the people by, that they could be a peculiar treasure unto the God himself, the one true God, and not many gods like all the heathen around them had. But the scripture says that the finger of God wrote upon those tablets of stone the law. Moses didn't uh, receive it being dictated to him, and then he inscribed it upon the stone. Oh, no. The finger of God himself wrote into those tablets of stone the Ten Commandments. We think of how Belshazzar, when he was having his big party, his big blast, drinking out of the golden vessels that once belonged to the holy temple of God back in Jerusalem that he had stolen and taken away as he took God's people captive down into Babylon. And he, he just thinks he's next to God himself. And he's parting, using these sacred vessels he should not have touched, that common man was not to touch. And they were drinking out of them, having a hilarious time. And all of a sudden, as he looks over upon the wall, he sees the finger of a man's hand writing, Many, many tinkle, you farzan. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. He saw his judgment written out on the wall in his language by the finger of God. We think of how Jesus, in Luke eleven twenty, it says that he exclaimed that he drove out demons by the finger of God. The finger of God. Oh, the bride appreciated the hands and the fingers that looked to her like rods of gold, these straight, slender rods of gold. You know, when you think of gold, you think of that which has gone through the fire and been purified. You don't arrive to find gold without it going through a furnace and going through that trial of fire where the dross is removed as the heat burns hot upon that that solid material and it begins to melt away till the dross is separated from the pure 
gold. So when we think of his fingers being like gold, rods of gold, we're thinking about his purity, his perfection, his divinity that came from his fiery trial at Calvary and at Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Those, those uh, golden fingers symbolize how he was refined through trial, through the fiery trial and the test where he submitted to the will of the Father. You know, those hands were pierced through me. Those very hands that she described as like golden, golden hands, golden rods as fingers, those hands were pierced for you. Precious hands, bleeding hands, yes. But like gold, they are pure. They are divine. You know, the scripture says in Hebrews 2, verse 10, ladies, we won't turn there, but it says that the captain of our salvation was made perfect through his suffering. That's how he was made perfect through what he suffered. I think of how in Luke 24 verse 39 in the King James and Amplified when he appeared after he arose from the grave, he said to doubting Thomas, he said, look, behold my hands and my feet. Look, feel me and see. And what were they seeing? What were they feeling? Those nail scarred hands. That's what they were seeing, and they knew for sure this was the Christ. I think of how the Lord, when he was among the crowds, he would lay his hands upon the children, gather them up upon to his knee and hold them and bless them, and how he would lay his hands upon the sick and upon the oppressed, those precious hands. And then she says his fingernails, they're like burl, which is a hard stone, speaking of it being something that can endure, the work of God is enduring, and his Fingernails are like topaz, a golden luster, which is a transparent material. For you see, the works of God have no hidden agenda. We use our fingernails like tools to grasp and to take hold of. Even the doctors look at our fingernails to judge our health. You know, his nails were like set jewels in his fingers. The works of the Lord's hands, God Almighty. They're like gold rods, pure, powerful, precious. Join us again as next time we talk about His body. Let flowers bloom, O oh Lord, where tears have fallen. Let our hearts as your earth and footstool you. Reason Copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs $34, DVDs $44, at $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brook song album. Audio cassettes $10 each. CDs $14 each, at $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts, call toll free 1 866 777 4748 or call 1-619-445-0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-4539 or 1-619-401-9389 You will again be glorified